Welcome to Bar Cart Bookshelf, a video series about books and the drinks they inspire. My name is Elias, and today we're talking about Absinthe by Brendan P. Belcour. Absinthe is a deco-punk alternate 20th century sci-fi thriller set in a world where the trenches of the Great War were not in Europe, but in North America, stretching across the upper Midwest and New England. And it's the story of Liam Mulcahy, a man who has forgotten his war record, who finds himself on the cusp of a grand and unveiling conspiracy, where he discovers that his involvement in the war was perhaps larger than he thought, and his involvement in the world that could be is larger than he might imagine. It's a wonderfully thrilling book that drags you along and pulls you through the action, filled with mind-bending twists and a sense of not knowing quite what's real uh, and not being sure what senses you can trust. It's a, a novel about illusions and telepathy, and there is no better spirit to encapsulate that than, of course, absinthe. Uh, one of my personal favorite spirits to drink, and one that we'll be mixing with today. Now, real absinthe does not have the uh, psychotropic qualities that it's frequently ascribed to in uh, literature and film, but it is a, a wonderfully um, flavored spirit, uh, the principal Flavors are going to be sort of anise, licorice, fennel, uh, those sorts of things, and uh, a really wonderful herbaceousness that can be, by turns, weighty um, and light and airy. So, without any further ado, why don't we turn then to this week's cocktail and uh, start mixing it up. So our drink today is called Echolocation. Um, it's going to be an absinthe cocktail in honor of absinthe by Brendan P. Belcourt. And we're gonna start with half an ounce of blue curacao. The color blue appears pretty frequently in um, the novel. It's one of those sort of light motifs. You see this blue right from the very beginning and continuing on as a through line throughout. It's one of those wonderful little details that you keep noticing again and again um, as a sort of touchstone in this world where you don't quite know what's real. So we'll get half an ounce of that in there. And then we'll get half an ounce of an almond liqueur. Uh, it's gonna be rich, golden, gonna bring a touch of sweetness, a touch of sort of caramely flavor, a uh, little bit of nuttiness, um, and it's something that has the ability to hold its own against the absinthe. Absinthe is so dominating that it can be a very difficult ingredient to mix in, especially when you want it to be the sort of star of the show. Um, and fortunately, with these two, we're getting uh, a bit of color, a bit of flavor, a bit of citrusiness from the curacao, a bit of nuttiness from the almond, and then we have the star of our show, the absinthe. But before we do that, the method used for serving the absinthe in uh, the novel is a sort of modified version of what's called the Bohemian method. Um, and so we're going to start with, you'll see I've got the little spoon here in my absinthe glass. I've got a sugar cube on top of that. And we're going to use an ounce of our absinthe. Uh, this is an American-made absinthe, St. George from out in California, appropriate to a novel so focused on uh, this early 20th century America. It's an absinthe vert, so a traditional green absinthe, and it's got those traditional botanicals while also having a sort of cool, almost mintiness about it. Really nice for this time of year. And we've got an ounce of that and we're gonna pour that just very slowly over our glass. And if you spill a little bit, that's unfortunate, but um, I 
it's all right. So now we've got our sugar cube doused in uh, the absinthe and we're going to do a little bit of high drama. So one of the fun things about absinthe is that it's a nice ritualized uh, spirit. It's something that people build a lot of uh, drinking rituals around and that's an effect that's used well in the novel to uh, help Liam and other characters move into a different state of mind. Not the sort of psychotropic absinthe that we sometimes see, but uh, absinthe as a, a meditative and thoughtful tool. And part of that is the, the methodology. So we're going to light a match and then I've got a little vial here of absinthe, which is gonna help make things a little bit easier. So we're gonna, there we go, let that go. And you can see our sugar cube is burning. Give it a few more spritzes, especially because we did lose a little bit of our absinthe to begin with. Just let that flame, good. And so that'll flame a little bit. You'll get some um, of the fiery flavors. It's going to soften and then for our final step, we're going to take some ice cold water. So you can imagine all of our ingredients are room temperature. We've added a little bit of fire and now things are a bit warm. We wanna cool stuff down. And so we're gonna pour that over the sugar cube, which is going to dissolve more of the way. And as you can see, we get what's called a louche effect, one of the hallmarks of absinthe service. We've got this sort of anethol um, anise oils in the absinthe and uh, those are going to turn this sort of creamy uh, green white when you add cold water and you do want it to be ice cold water because that is the only thing that's sort of cooling down your cocktail and you want it to be uh, nice and refreshing so there you have it with a bit of fire and a bit of ice the echolocation a um, traditional absinthe cocktail with a modern twist um, in honor of Brendan P. Belcourt's absinthe. The uh, sci-fi thriller is available now. I've got a link down below, as well as links to the Boston Shaker to buy tools and ingredients. And uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Written version of the recipe is also down below. There's a lot down below, all sorts of information. Um, so try the drink, let me know what you think, and until next time, cheers.